What's happening guys? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we are going to be taking a look at the 2021 Lincoln Corsair. Now this is the second generation version of the vehicle. 2020 it got a little bit of a facelift. It went from the MKC rebranded to the Corsair. So there are a couple new things that are going to be out in the 2021 version. One of the biggest ones is we now have factory towing options available in this Corsair. But before we dive right into it, we want to thank you guys as always for helping to support the channel. So close to that thousand subscriber mark. And once I get there, giving away a free set of weather tech floor liners to one lucky person so make sure that you like the video if you enjoy the content subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on and guess what somewhere inside of this video is a ten dollar amazon gift card but guys let's dive right into it and see what the 2021 lincoln corsair has to offer And taking a peek at the key fob, so a couple things to point out. We've got our unlock button, lock button, remote start, our trunk release, as well as our horn or our panic alarm. We also do have an emergency access key in case we need to get access to the vehicle and our fob's not working for whatever reason. In order to be able to remote start the Corsair, we can remote start it through our key fob or we can remote start directly through our cell phone. In order to be able to remote start through the key fob, all we have to do is press the lock button once and the circle button twice. That's going to remote start. In order to cancel the remote start, all we have to do is press that circle button once. Now, when it comes down to gas in the Corsair, the horsepower and the torque specs that I just shared with you were based off of using a premium fuel. Do you need to use a premium fuel? Absolutely not. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 octane, so regular gas. Now, will you notice a difference if you use an 87 regular octane versus a high performance like a 91 or a 93? Absolutely. But having said that, you don't have to do that. You can use this regular gas instead. In order to fill it up, it's just along our driver's side. We're just going to hit that, open it up, and it's a capless system. Just going to insert the hose, fill up, and then close it off. You're set to go. When it comes down to the 2021 Corsair, there are three different engine choices that are available. Choice number one is a two liter EcoBoost. It's gonna push out 250 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque. Choice number two is a 2.3 liter turbo. It's gonna push out 295 horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of torque. Number three is going to be a hybrid engine. It's a 2.5 liter engine, non-turboed, but it's also got an electric drivetrain to it as well, which is going to power the rear wheels. It's going to push out 266 horsepower. Now, here's the kicker we don't have the exact torque specs as of yet so that is coming soon but the electric side of things it's going to be a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery and as we start to look underneath the hood as you can see there so a little bit of a busy engine bay but nice and clean nice and beautiful looking at the same time and a few things that we can easily get to if we need to so we've got some fluids that we can top up more specifically specifically we've got our windshield wiper fluid easy access to the battery there as well in order to be able to open up the trunk on this thing, there's a few different ways that we can do it. So we do have the ability to double press this in order to open it up. There also is a button just underneath. So if we go underneath the L in the Lincoln, there's a button there, but we also do have a foot activated lift gate. So in order to be able to open up with your foot, all you're gonna do is just swipe your foot underneath and step back. As you can see, foot activated. Really, really useful, especially if you have you know kids, if you've got bags in your hands, whatever the case may be. Let's have a peek inside. This is what spacing is going to look like inside of the Corsair with those rear seats up. So one thing to note is that the back seat, so that rear seat there can be moved forward a little bit. So there is a slider to be able to do that. And then taking a peek with the seats down, this is what kind of area we're looking at working with as well. Hey, now taking a peek in the back of this thing, so just underneath this, as you can see, we do have an inflator kit now. That Now that is something that's new for 2021. There is an option to get that mini spare tire. The package details will show up on the screen, but looking at the select version and some of the reserve versions, we will get that tire inflator kit. Along the side, as you can see, we do have a little bit of storage space underneath. Along our driver's side of the back, we do have a 12 volt adapter. And along the passenger side, we've got a little storage along the right side, and we also do have our power buttons in order to fold the seats down. In order to be able to fold the seats down, it is just a button press along the side, so what we're going to do is press that, and as you can see there, power down. So it is power down, and then we manually have to lift the seat back up. Now, this specific Corsair behind me does not have factory towing, but one of the nice things about the 2021 Corsair is that it now does offer factory towing as an option. Getting that from the factory is available and you can pull up to 2,200 pounds inside of the Corsair. 
Now there is some technology that's going to come standard inside of the Corsair. We do have our backup camera as well as our reverse sensing system. That's going to come standard. Along the side view mirror, we also do have our lane keeping system and our blind spot system. So lane keeping system, that's going to help, help us stay in our lane. And then the blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Now, when it comes down to spacing in the 2021 Corsair, so the driver's seat is set up for somebody who's six feet tall. I'm six feet tall. So even sitting in the back, I still have a ton of leg room. I also do have a lot of room for my feet. And then up overhead, I've got about an inch and a half worth of headspace, two inches maybe worth of headspace. So if you've got somebody who's a little bit taller, they may need to sit in the driver's seat or you can get them in the middle seat in the back here in that second row in order to give them a little bit more space because of that twin panel sunroof. Now, a few things to note about this vehicle specifically. So this is the ebony cashew interior, which I personally <laughs> love the look of. I think it looks really, really sharp. Now, one thing to point out is that the vehicle itself in the reserve version does have heated second row seats, but it's not going to be for the entire bench. It's just going to be for the driver's side and the passenger side. Along this middle seat, unfortunately, you're not going to have a heated seat. In order to turn it on, just along the back, as you can see there, we do have our buttons, which allow us to turn on the individual heated seats. And as we start to move down, we do have another little cover there, which does have a few USB ports. And one other thing to point out along our back seat, we do have some cup holders, so we can just grab this and pull down. And as you can see, some simple cup holders there, back up in order to lock it into place. Now, another thing to point out is that in the Corsair, it also does have adjustable second row seats, which I think is incredible. So there is a lever just underneath the seat, so we can see there. So all we have to do is crank that lever up and we can slide the seat forwards and backwards as necessary. So if we need to create a little bit of extra space and you can, you can do that individually for the 60, 60 on the driver or the 40% on the passenger side in that second row. So it is really, really useful, especially if you need a little bit of extra storage space in the back. We do have a little bit of added technology along our driver's door as well so as you can see we do have a keypad there which does give you keyless entry in order to get inside of the vehicle so if you forgot your key fob on you you can get inside all you have to do is enter the five digit factory combination you can also set additional combination locks in order to be able to get inside of this thing looking along our driver's side door so starting off in the bottom we've got our unlock and our lock buttons we've got the ability to power fold our side view mirrors and we've got our window control buttons as we start to move up. Now, in order to be able to adjust the seats in the Corsair for the driver and the passenger first row seats, it's just along our doors. Driver's side for the driver, obviously, and passenger for the passenger side. But we can use that lever in order to bring the seat forwards and backwards using this one down there. And we can also lift it up in order to lift the seat up or down in order to lower the seat. And then from there, we can use this one in order to be able to adjust the backrest. And then the last one is going to be this button along the top, which is going to be for our power lumbar support. Once you've got your seat set up, all you're going to do is press and hold either one, two, or three to create a unique profile for you. Adjusting the steering wheel in the Corsair is also a very straightforward process. It is power and it's telescopic. Just by our left knee, as you can see there, we do have a little dial pad. So that dial pad's going to let us bring the steering wheel in or out so that telescopic, we can go up or down with it as well. Once you've got your perfect position for the steering wheel, make sure you press and hold your profile so either one, two, or three along the door in order to be able to remember your settings for the steering wheel. As we start to move along the side, so as you can see there, we do have another button in order to either open or close the trunk. We've got the ability to turn on our fog lamps, and we've also got a button that's going to let us determine what's happening with our running lamps. So one, the one that I recommend keeping it on is just this A, this auto setting. What that's going to do is that's automatically going to turn on the daytime or the nighttime running lamps, just depending on the time of day. So definitely recommend keeping it there. We also have the ability to either increase or decrease the brightness on our screen. It is just a push button start, so just to the left hand side of that screen, we're just going to press, make sure that your foot's on the brake in order to actually be able to start it up. As we look on the screen, we've got a little summary of our maps because this thing does have built in factory navigation. Now, if you're not a fan of using factory navigation, don't worry about it. You can use Sync, this vehicle does have our Sync 3 system, which gives you the ability to use either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You have to be physically connected on Sync 3 in order to be able to use that, but it is a really, really great feature to be able to use if you want to use, let's say, Google Maps. Apple Maps or Waze and you'll be able to use those directly through this middle screen as we start to move down so a few things to point out we've got our audio and we can select between our different sources on the top so our AM FM Sirius XM Bluetooth and that would be if our phone was connected 
In order to be able to tune to a station, we just press this direct tune button and we can tune by doing this. There's an option as we start to move down. So there's a little tuning knob there. And we can also press a button on the steering wheel in order to voice tune instead. So we've tuned stations in order to be able to save that station as a preset. All we're gonna do is press and hold. And as you can see, it's now remembered it. So it's really that simple. Moving down, the ability to e easily add a phone. So really, really straightforward and really, really simple. On your phone, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. So just go into your phone, Bluetooth is turned on. It's going to take just a second there. We're just gonna hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so what we're doing is just waiting for that to come up on our screen, saying that we've got a Corsair. Should take a second there for my phone to re recognize it. There we go. So as you can see, Lincoln Corsair has been recognized. We're just going to click on that button there. And this is going to work the same for Confirm Android Auto and the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. This is going to work the same for Android and iPhone devices. Just make sure that the number there matches up and it does. So we're going to hit pair and yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so it has been paired up and all we're gonna do, so a couple things on our phone, let's actually finish off there first. So allow contacts and favorites to sync. We absolutely wanna make sure that we do that. We want our contacts to sync up in order to be able to make those voice calls. So we're gonna hit allow. And the phone is now connected. Now, a couple things we have to finish off here. Automatically download our contacts. Yes, we want to make sure it does that. 911 Assist is one of the bigger ones to make sure that we turn that on. And the reason why is because if we're ever in an accident with our phone connected, the vehicle will automatically dial 911 for us. From there, we're just going to hit finish and we are now connected. So we can see my contacts, phones, my text messages, and a number of other things. We are fully connected. If we go to apps for a second, we do have LiveX Live. If I had Spotify installed on my phone, that would work there. But LiveX Live essentially is just a, it's a radio app. So you've got the ability to play those directly through this middle screen. In order to be able to remove the phone, we're just gonna go to settings and phone. We can see active devices. Once this message goes away, there we go. So we can view active devices, manage contacts, and do a number of other things. In order to be able to view or remove the device, we're just going to hit there, select your iPhone. We can either disconnect or we can completely remove. So let's remove, and then device is now fully disconnected. And as you can see, it has been removed. Now, as I mentioned, the vehicle does have built-in factory navigation. If you wanted to run off of your phone instead, you could do that. When you're using iPhone, so Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you do physically have to be connected. Let's actually see how that works for a setup. Using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of the 2021 Lincoln Corsair is a very simple process. Now for all Ford and Lincoln vehicles, when you are using Sync 3 for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, you have to physically be connected to the vehicle. So step one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our USB plug and as you can see there, we do have a few USB ports. So all we're gonna do is take this and we're just going to insert it into any of the available USB ports. After you're plugged in, all you're going to do, so starting off in the iPhone, we're just going to physically plug into the phone and watch what happens. Apple CarPlay lets you use your phone in a way, so it's going to give us a lot of options. We need to make sure that we hit continue in order for CarPlay to work. So we're just going to hit continue, and in order to be able to use it, we do have to agree to the terms and conditions. So we're just going to agree. There we go, and it's going to say we have to unlock the iPhone. So just enter your combination, enter Face ID, or just your fingerprint, whatever the case may be, in order for you to unlock. But as you can see there, we've got my screen now set up for Apple CarPlay. It really is that simple. We've got our basic sync three, a basic sync system. So if we want to jump back to this main screen, or we can jump back into Apple CarPlay by pressing that button. We can use Google Maps, we can use Apple Maps, we can use Waze. So whatever you've currently got installed on your phone, you can go through your podcasts and a number of other things. Get back to the home screen by pressing this button. And we do have the ability to edit what currently shows up there. And it's very straightforward to do that. Now, after you are set up there, one thing to note is that on your phone, you will have something else showing up saying that they want you to use Sync 3 while the phone is locked. We absolutely want to make sure we do that because we want Sync 3 to be active when our phone is physically locked. But as you can see there, we can now use Google Maps or Apple Maps instead of the regular built-in map. So if you have a preference to use one or the other, you've got the capabilities to do that and just pressing the home screen will bring it bring us back to this default or sync in order to bring us back to the actual home screen and then again as i mentioned we just have to select that in order to be able to get back into our apple carplay screen in order to be able to get rid of apple carplay very very straightforward process just click on apple carplay we can either disable it completely or we can completely remove my phone 
and connect and there we go so we are now physically disconnected for apple carplay and we can disable it from there or all we have to do is just unplug and we're set to go the process is going to be the same for Android Auto. So on an Android device, all you're going to do is take a USB port and we're just going to plug ourselves into USB there. And it's going to take a second. There you go, same idea. So we do have the Android Auto screen now. It's the same thing, we just have to connect to that. And we have a number of different privacy terms and conditions. The same thing, in order to use Android Auto in the Corsair, we do have to agree to this. And then as you can see, so it's trying to initialize on the phone. So let's take a look at the phone for a second now. Welcome to Android Auto. So we just want to unlock in order to continue. So we're just gonna unlock. And here we go. So Android Auto would like to turn on Bluetooth to pair with the vehicle. So yes, we're gonna connect with that. Okay, there we go. And we are now connected. We're paired. It's really that simple. Really just a plug and play solution. On the phone, allow access to messages. Yes, we want to do that. So we're just going to hit allow there and automatically download the contacts. We do want to do that as well. So a couple things to point out. Let's actually jump back to the home screen for a second there. Now, I do have Waze installed on this Android device, so we can either use Google Maps or we can use Waze. We can jump back to the regular sync home screen just by pressing this, jump back into Android Auto from there, which takes us to our basic settings screens. But same thing, we can look at some basic settings on the phone. We can look at phone calls, text messages, things like that. So it's really, really straightforward, really, really simple. Along the bottom there, we can switch between either Waze or Google Maps. So really, really cool that we've got the capabilities to be able to do that. And then jumping back into the home screen again. So we can also just press this Maps in order to hotkey directly into our Maps on either Waze or Google Maps instead. And then jumping between our podcasts, jumping back to the home screen. So we've got our podcast set up and a lot of other options also. And then same thing in order to be able to disconnect, we can literally either pull this out or if you'd rather default back to our traditional setup for using the built-in navigation, just gonna hit Android Auto. We can either completely remove my phone or we can turn Android Auto off, which is going to default to the factory navigation instead. And then we're just gonna remove the phone from the vehicle and then just disconnect from there. So as you can see, a very straightforward process. Now, in order to be able to use the factory navigation equally as straightforward, we're just going to start typing in the address that we want to go to. There we go. And we're going to default to the address that we've got there. And so as we can see, we can save it as a favorite or we can just start the navigation. Obey traffic laws, be alert and use voice commands while driving. Okay, so very Please straightforward. Please proceed to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. Okay, so we do have the ability to mute the guidance as well if we'd like to. In order to be able to cancel out of an existing route, we're just going to press the X button and cancel the route off. And as you can see, it's now canceled out. As we jump into the menu, so we've got a few things that we can look at. So screen view, traffic list, the big one is going to be this navigation settings. So we can look at map preferences. We'll start off there. It's going to give us quite a few options there. So a big one is going to be the point of interest icon. So it lets us know if there are nearby gas stations, restaurants, things like that route preferences. Do we want to have the fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly route? Or do we want to avoid things like freeways, toll roads, ferries, cars and tunnels, etc.? So we've got the ability to select that and that's going to build our navigation route based off of whatever preferences we've got. So we start to move back. Last one is going to be our navigation preferences, which is going to be the prompts that we get. So is it just going to be our voice? So turn coming up in 200 meters, is it going to be a voice, a tone, letting us know if there's an upcoming turn? Those are going to be our basic preferences. We can look at our history, point of interest icons, etc. That's going to be the navigation there. Moving down to our apps along the bottom. So if our phone was connected, we have the ability to use certain apps. And there are certain apps that are available that can be used on this middle screen also. Basic settings. We've got some basic sound settings. That's going to give us the ability to change our treble, mid-range bass, balance, etc. Hey, from there we've got our clock settings. So we've got the ability to either increase or decrease an hour or a minute at a time. If you prefer that military time, we've got the ability to switch that out as well. So that 24 hour time mode. Daylight savings time. What that'll do is it's automatically going to either spring us forward or make us fall back an hour, just depending on the time of year. And then our auto time zone update. So if we're going to a different time zone, it'll automatically update the time for us. From there we've got Bluetooth. So we can turn Bluetooth off or we can add a Bluetooth device from there. Phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So that's where we would go in order to be able to add a phone or if a phone was connected, we could see whatever devices are currently installed there. Looking in some of our general settings, so we've got a lot of basic options. So what language do we want to use, either English, Spanish or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit? What measurement units do we want? The beep. 
If you're really not a fan of that beep, you do have the ability to turn it off. Automatic system updates is one that I absolutely recommend keeping on. And the reason why is because it's automatically going to update the vehicle software for you. The only one that won't be updated on Sync 3 is going to be the navigation. You either have to download the update yourself and install it, or when your vehicle's in for service, better yet, get the service text to install it for you. It makes it really, really straightforward. And we also have the ability to do a master reset. So we've got the ability to re reset the Lincoln Way app, or we can do a master reset to reset the vehicle to the factory defaults. Hey, along our bottom left-hand side, radio. So we've got a few other things there. So we've got our radio text and our preset pages. That's going to be the big one. So it's defaulting to two and we can go up to six individual preset pages. But why would we want to do that? So let's wait for that to update. Takes a second and jump back to audio. But look at this. We've now got up to 30 individual settings that we can use just by updating that basic audio setting. From there, we've got some driver assistance settings. So driver assistance, lane keeping system. So the lane keeping system works three different ways. So the first way is going to be an alert. So if we start to veer over without signaling, we'll get a little bit of a shake on our steering wheel. From there, the aid is actually going to recenter us and pull us back into our lane, and the alert and the aid will do both. So it'll give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if you're running over a rumble pavement, and then it'll recenter you, pull you back into your lane. The intensity is going to be the intensity of that shake. Do we want it to be either a high, medium, or a low shake? From there, we've also got our pre-collision assist. So pre-collision assist with active braking. Really, really useful. So if the vehicle senses an oncoming collision, it'll pre-charge the brakes and automatically brake for you. Now, there are additional technology packages available, which will give you evasive steering and a number of other things. Next one we've got, so our rear camera view. So let's click on the rear camera there. Okay, so our enhanced parking aid. So as you can see there, we do have the option for, it would be these little sensors along the bottom there. So whether or not that shows up on screen, if the vehicle was equipped with that 360 camera, we would get a fuller view of that 360 as we go. Blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot in either side of the vehicle. You can turn that system off if you really don't like it, but it's not an audible thing. It's just something visual. So on the side view mirrors, let's pick you up there for a sec. So on the side view mirrors, these things are going to highlight orange right there. So you can just kind of make it out if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. A couple other things to point out are cross traffic alerts. So if the vehicle senses somebody coming perpendicular, so either from the left or the right hand side, it'll let you know that there's a potential collision. You can turn that one off if you'd like to. The driver alert is tied into the lane keeping system. So if we start to veer over too many times, we're going to get a warning letting us know we should probably rest. From there, we've got our auto start stop. So that's the one that's going to kill power to the engine. Doesn't happen all the time. It does happen occasionally. Auto hold setting, what that's going to do is with it on, if you're stopped and take your foot off the brake, the vehicle will be held in place. From there, we've also got our cr traction control. We can turn that on or off looking at some basic vehicle settings. So basic things so we can change our idle, our rear occupant alert, really want to make sure that we have that one set up. And the reason why is because when we turn the vehicle off, it'll let us know to check the back seat. So really useful, especially if you have young kids, just to get a reminder, letting you know to make sure that there's nobody back there. Then for the rear occupancy alert, all we're going to do is when we turn the vehicle off, But look at this, super, super useful. It's such a small feature, but it's such a useful feature as well. Letting you know to check to see if there's anybody in the back there, I think is an absolutely brilliant idea. Because if you have a young child, it, it does happen where you might forget the child's in the back there. So having that message come up on screen is a super useful feature. And I love the fact that Lincoln's included that inside of their vehicles. And there we've got our easy entry exit, which is going to do a couple things. So when we turn the vehicle off with this turned on, it's going to automatically lower the seat all the way back in order to let us get out a little bit easier. From there, we've also got my key. My key gives you the ability to use certain limitations on the vehicle. So maybe the radio can't turn on unless the seatbelt's plugged in, or maybe the vehicle can only go up to 100 kilometers an hour. You can set that up for an individual key fob just using the my key setting. From there, we've got our onboard modem serial number, nothing too fancy there and our remote start setup. So when the vehicle's remote started, do we want to even have it, the ability to remote start, yes or no? That can be done through the key fob or through our cell phone. Climate control settings, so when we're remote started, is it going to automatically let the vehicle determine the cabin temperature or is it going to be based off of our last settings? Our seats and steering wheel, will the heated seats and the heated steering wheel turn on, yes or no? And the duration of the remote start for five, 10 or 15 minutes. 
From there, we've got our windows. So our window buttons, we've got a couple different options there. Remote open, remote close, we can turn those off. Let's jump outside of the vehicle to figure out how that works. In order to be able to roll the windows down using the key fob, what we're gonna do is press the unlock button twice. On that second press, we're just gonna hold. So one, two, and hold. As you can see, all the windows there roll down. Rolling them back up, we're gonna press that lock button twice and hold it on the lock on the second press. And there we go. So as you can see, very straightforward. And moving back from there, we've got our wipers. So courtesy wipe, rain sensing wiper, and rear wiper on when in reverse. So the rain sensing wiper is automatically going to let their wiper adjust based off of the, how much water is hitting the windshield, and the rear wiper on when in reverse. So when your main windshield wipers are going on your front, if you put the vehicle in reverse, it's automatically going to flip on that rear wiper for you. From there, we've got our power lift gate. We've got the ability to either in enable or disable the switch on the outside. Basic vehicle lighting, we can also adjust that. Very straightforward, so our auto high beam setting, very, very nice. What that's going to do is it's going to turn the high beams on for us automatically and then dim them and turn them off as the vehicle senses somebody oncoming. Welcome lighting is going to be on the outside of the vehicle, letting us know and welcoming us to the vehicle. And then we've also got the ability to add in an auto lamp delay. So when the vehicle's locked, does the, do the main lights stay on or turn off right away? From there, we've got some basic lock settings. So auto unlock, miss lock, etc. Remote unlock, and then our intelligent access as well. So one, make sure that you keep these things on all as a default. It's there, it's set up, it's very, very simple. One of the nice things is that with these things set up the way they are, you don't need to physically unlock the vehicle. What you can do is you can simply walk up to the vehicle with the fob in your pocket and the door is automatically going to unlock. From there, our mirror settings, we've got the ability to auto fold also. And two other ones. So we've also got our keypad code. So the keypad code is the one that I showed you outside there. But that's going to let us get access to the vehicle without having the key fob on us. Hey, a couple other things to point out. Lincoln Way gives you the ability to use certain things on your cell phone. So the vehicle itself is equipped with an onboard modem that's going to give you the ability to use the vehicle as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. Now, one thing to point out about that functionality is that you do have to make sure that you've got a data plan in order to use it as a hotspot. So a couple of things that we can point out from there, we've got some the ability to use some mobile apps as we get into our Wi-Fi settings. So as I mentioned, there is a built-in modem. You can connect to Wi-Fi at home or through your cell phone instead. And one of the things, one of the reasons why we want to make sure that we have the Wi-Fi on is it's tied into the automatic update. So we, the vehicle will automatically update the software with the exception of the navigation. With the 911 assist, we want to make sure that we are physically connected to the vehicle in order for that to work well, either through Bluetooth or physical connection through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But the 911 assist is what's going to automatically dial 911 if we're ever in an accident. Moving up, as we can see there, we've also got ambient lighting that's going to give us the ability to control the lighting inside the vehicle. Let's see what that looks like. So this is going to be the ambient light setup that we've got. So as you can see there, we have a number of different ambient light settings. So we've got different colors. As we start to select different colors, as you can see there, it is going to change along the cup holders. Very, very nice. So we've got a couple different color choices from there. As we start to move down our display, so we do have a bright, beautiful display there, but for some people it might be a little bit too much. So if you find that it's a little bit too busy, we can turn the display off completely. We can just press in order to be able to activate it again. We can have a little bit of a calming screen, which gets rid of a lot of the noise. Same thing, press in order to bring it back. And jumping into our settings there. So display, we've got a few other things we can do. We can change the background, the brightness, and we can also change between the mode. So it's either going to be auto, which is going to flip between the daytime or the nighttime mode. And we've also got the ability to select either the daytime all the time or the nighttime all the time. So really a matter of personal preference on the look of the screen. But as you can see there, so it does tweak the overall look of it. Which one you end up using is really up to you. I personally love the look of the night, so I would keep it in the nighttime mode all the time. But... As you can see there, the daytime, it does look slightly different. Daytime will take a second. There we go. So we've got our daytime mode, which is just a little bit brighter. As we start to move into our voice control, we've got a few different options. The advanced mode, what that's going to do is it's not going to give us as many things as we press buttons. I want you to listen for a second. Tune to 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. Okay, so we're going to jump into audio for a second. But as you can see, it's changed the station for me. Now with the advanced mode on, listen. Tune to 94.9. 
Okay. So nothing, but as you can see there, it has changed the station. So one of the benefits of using that advanced mode is that we won't get as many not notifications and as many messages as we navigate through. Phone confirmation, we want to make sure that one's on. Do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. From there, we've got our voice command list. So our voice command list is going to be this list that pops up on the screen when we hit the voice button. So this is our command list. Whether or not you want that one to show up, hit this on or off. We also have our valet mode. Valet mode is going to give you the ability to lock out the screen by entering in a four digit pin. So something very, very difficult like one, 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 one. Don't use that. Use something more challenging if you're ever going to use this. But what it's going to do is you can see it's locked the screen out. So I can't do anything on the screen until I enter that four digit number again and hit the done button and it's now unlocked it. A few other things to point out. We've got, let's look at uh, our navigation for a second. So navigation, we've already been through there when we went through our navigation there. Driver's seat. So this is where we can select the lumbar support. Now the vehicle does have the option for a 24 way massage chair seat. If we had the massage chair seat option, it would show up along the bottom. We can select the lumbar support for the driver passenger side. And we also have personal profiles. So really, really useful if you have multiple people that are driving the vehicle. As we start to move down, as you can see, we've got a few other buttons there. Now the vehicle, it does have the option for park assist. This specific one doesn't have the park assist button, but when we hit that, it's just going to help us navigate to parking. So the park assist is available in a specific package and it will help out with parallel and perpendicular parking. As we move down, this is a hotkey for some of our driver assistance settings, which are going to be the auto hold, the auto start stop, and then our traction control. And we can just press that button in order to get that hotkey to go away. And the vehicle, so we do have the option for a 360 camera. This specific one does not have the 360 camera. So when we press this button, it's just going to be our reverse camera that shows up, pressing that hotkey again in order for it to go away. As we start to move down, so this thing does have piano keys rather than a traditional gear shift. So there's no gear shift down there. So in order to be able to change gears, all we would do is select. So just make sure that your foot's on the brake and we can change between our reverse, neutral, or our drive mode. Back into park from there. As we start to move down, we've got some hot keys and some hot buttons as well. So as we start to move over, this is going to be for our audio. Oh, that Revel audio system sounds so good. So that's going to be for our volume rocker. We can turn the system on or off by pressing this button. This is going to be for our screen. So as you can see there, we can move between our calming screen, black screen, or back to our screen on. And as we start to move down again, we can change between our different sources. So our AM, FM, Sirius XM, phone, etc. We've got our four-way blinkers, the ability to either change between radio stations or songs, and then we can manually tune. So tuning, we've got a few different options. We can either tune using this, we can tune on our screen by going to direct tune, or we can press this button in order to be able to tune using our voice as we start to move down. A few things to point out along the top, we've got the ability to go max uh, windshield defrost, our rear window defroster, AC, max AC, heated steering wheel, as well as our heated and cooled front seats. So that's going to be for the driver and the passenger side. Next up, we've got our auto setting. That's going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be. This is going to be a hot key for some of our climate settings. Next up is going to be our air circulation button. So with that air circulation button turned on, it's going to circulate air in the cabin. When the button's turned off, it's going to pull air from outside and bring it in. So with that option, when you're pulling air from outside, it will be a little bit harder on the air conditioner as well when you go that route. Last one, we've got this little knob. So what this is going to do is a couple different things. So if, I, if we rotate, it's going to let us adjust our fan speed, or we can actually push this big button in order to bring up the majority of our controls. So we do have dual zone climate control, which is really, really nice, different for the driver and passenger. When we do that, when we set the two different passenger settings, let's let that go away for a second, but we now have dual zone highlighted. So we can just press that button in order for it to go away. As we start to move down, so underneath, as you can see there, we do have our 12 volt adapter, so our traditional cigarette lighter adapter, and we've got a couple USB ports, so our USB A and then our USB C. As we start to move down a little bit more, we do have our cup holders as well as our selectable drive modes. So by selecting that, we've got a couple different options that are going to come up on the screen. So we've got our regular drive mode, our conserve, and then excite. Along the other way, we've got our slippery and then our deep snow conditions. From there, moving back down, we do have our parking brake. So we have our electronic parking brake. And then we've also got our little storage space underneath. So we've got a little coin spot there and then a little bit of space underneath along the side. Hey, next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel. So a couple things to point out, starting off on our left-hand side, we do have our volume rocker. So we can go up in order to increase the volume 
or move that down in order to decrease. We can change songs or change stations by moving this rocker left or right. Now a couple things to point out. This specific vehicle does not have the adaptive cruise control. It is available though throughout the Corsair lineup. Now if we had the adaptive cruise control we would have some different buttons. By turning the regular cruise control or the adaptive as you can see we have buttons that show up or they hide just depending on what's currently going on. So we know that cruise control is enabled. We can set it along the back so we can set it at whatever speed we like and then along the right hand side we can either resume or cancel. So this is the regular cruise control. With the adaptive it's a set it and forget it cruise control we'd have a lot more flexibility and a lot more options. Turning that off just by pressing the button again. Off to our right hand side now a lot of different options that are available there. We can go to the right in order to make a phone call. Going to the left is going to give us the option as you can see there to change between our active sources so our AM FM Sirius XM if our phone was connected it would show up there pressing back and we can also have a hotkey in order to get to our navigation so as you can see there we can look at previous destinations point of interest now it's one of these things that you can see there as we start to move this rocker up and down side to side certain things show up and certain things hide which is really really nice because it gives us a lot of flexibility as to what's currently going on and it lets us know what you can currently do as well Pressing this button, what that's going to do is give us a few options along the side. So we can press that in order to look at our fuel economy, tire pressure, calming screen, and a few others. And then as we can see there, we also do have a basic settings button. So we press down in order to look at either our display setup or our oil life. So as we go to our display setup, we can show what's currently going to show up there. So we've got our basic information screens. If we want the speedometer to go there, we can have our tachometer in the view as well, which is going to show up. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go home for a second. And all of a sudden, we've got our speedometer on the right and our tachometer on the left. Moving back down into our basic settings, and we can go to our display setup again, our eco-coaching, border crossing as well. So as you can see on the right side, we have the miles per hour and the kilometers per hour shown, or we can hide that, pressing the home button to back, back, to back out to the default again. Now one other button to point out on the steering wheel is this one. That's going to be our hot button in order to use the voice activated features. So voice activated, we can do voice activated navigation, we can make phone calls, we can change the radio station and a number of other things just by pressing this button. Now as you start to move in a little bit, just along our left hand side we have the minus and then the plus, so that's going to give us better control over what gear we're in as we're driving. Along our left stick, so that's going to be the one for our blinkers, so the left right blinker, push away in order to turn on or pulled in towards us for the high beams, and then right on the very end of it, so we do have our lane keeping system. So we can turn that lane keeping system on or off by pressing that button. We know the system's on because we have those bowling lanes that show up. So the system itself, it's going to turn on at, so the system itself is actually going to turn on at any speed but it doesn't actually become active until you hit about 62 kilometers an hour once you hit that speed you're going to notice that those lanes go green and that's that lets you know that the lane keeping system is now active moving along our right hand stick. So this vehicle is equipped with rain sensing wipers. So we do have the ability to control how sensitive it is. Along our right hand side we've got the ability to turn on our rear wiper. As we start to move up overhead, we do have our programmable garage door openers. There is the sunglasses holder, as well as our cabin lighting. So the ability to turn the lights on, cabin lights on or off, just depending on whether or not the doors are open. Now this one does also have the twin panel sunroof. So that is going to be standard on the reserve model of the vehicle. And then we've got the ability to control the shade so we can open and close the shade and then open and close the sunroof. All right, guys, next up, time for the fun part. Let's take this thing for a spin on the road and see how it handles. Now, this is the two liter version of the vehicle. So I'm sure it's going to be plenty powerful. It's the same two liter engine that's in the Ford Edge, which is extremely powerful. Same two liter engine that's in the Lincoln Nautilus. And again, that engine is super powerful for the size. But with it being in a smaller vehicle, it's going to be super, super peppy. There we go. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. And one of the nice things about Lincoln vehicles is just how quiet the cabins are as you drive. Oh, that's great. And then when you need the power, <laughs> the power is there. It's there and then some super responsive brakes, super responsive throttle. Oh, that's great. 
Now, a couple of things to note, though, the vehicle itself is available. It's like, so as I mentioned, it's the two liter turbo, it's a 2.3 liter turbo, and then the 2.5 liter non-turbo, that's the hybrid. The hybrid I'm actually really, really excited about getting into. I love the fact that, that, that Ford's really kind of pushing forward, Ford, like they're really pushing forward with that, you know, hybrid and then the fully electric drivetrains in their vehicles. So I'm super pumped to be starting to test drive the Mach-E coming up over the course of the next couple months. That's going to be really, really exciting. I've, you know, I've done a little bit of a review for the Mach-E. Take a look down in the description if you want to have a look at that one. Now, one thing to note about the Corsair. So the Corsair hybrid engine specifically, the vehicle itself, they don't actually have the horse, or the, uh, the torque specs, I should say, available as of right now. What they're saying is that it's anticipated that with the, the actual electric side of the engine, it's going to be powering the rear wheels. So what that ends up looking like for final torque, we're not 100% sure of as of today. So as of the time of shooting this video. But having said that, they are anticipating it having 110 extra pounds of torque because of that electric drivetrain, which is really, really nice. Because that's something that's slightly different with some of the other hybrid vehicles, the Aviator specifically, where it doesn't really affect the actual gas mileage, but it does affect the overall performance of the vehicle. So, you get a little bit of a give and take there. Oh, it's so comfortable. Now, one thing to note, this specific Corsair does not have the massage chair seats. Is it a luxury? Yeah, but is it super comfortable and is it worth it? Also, yeah. So you really have to determine what's important for you in a vehicle. Oh, this is great though. Okay, so one thing to note, the lanes themselves, they are highlighting green, letting us know that the system itself is activated. Now that's the lane keeping system. I've got it set up two different ways. I've got the lane keeping set system set up so that it's going to give me a little bit of a steering wheel shake, but it's also gonna recenter me and pull me back into my lane as I go. And the auto start stop has also kicked in. So that's one thing. If you're not a fan of it, you've got the ability to turn it off on a case by case basis under our driver assistance settings in the screen. Really, really straightforward in order to be able to do that. Let's push this a little bit. <laughs> Super peppy for a two liter. Oh, that's great. It's great, the power is there when you need it. So from a first impression feel perspective, it's got the same horsepower and the same horsepower and the torque specs as the 2020 Corsair. So if you're in an MKC, going to a, you know, going to the 2021 Corsair might make sense if you're already in the 2020 Corsair, unless you need the vehicle to also have factory towing going to the 2021 may not make as much sense. So it's ultimately going to depend on your own individual situation, what your vehicle needs are also. And that's why making sure that you're dealing with a rep that's gonna ask the right questions is so important. But if you're a first time Lincoln buyer, the Corsair, whether it's the 2021 or the 2020, it is a great buy. The ultimate decision of whether or not you look at the 20 versus the 21 is going to depend on factory towing and then the available vehicle choices as well. Because at the end of the day, we the 2021 or the 2020s, I should say, there isn't a ton of dealer inventory left. So you might have to get a vehicle that's got more specs than you need, but again, stop by your local Lincoln store. They'll be able to do a full inventory search and try to find something that's right for you. Or they might end up recommending that you look at a factory factory order instead, which there isn't a downside to getting a factory order with the exception that it's going to take a little bit of time to get to you. You might be looking at a month, two, three months or so to get it. <laughs> Power. 
All the power. Oh, that's nice. It's good to know that when you need it, you can put your foot down and this thing will go. It'll go. Oh, that's great. All right, so I do have the lane keeping system turned on right now. Going to just do a light test just by going over. And it's giving me a little warning and it's starting to recorrect and reset me. I love it. It's such a good technology to have inside of a vehicle. Okay, let's get off here. Okay, and same thing. So lane keeping system, it's recognized the lanes. Start to veer over a little bit and recentered, pulled me back in. What's it gonna do here? All right, so it is recentered me again. Oh, recentered me, recentered me. Okay, there we go. So it's just kind of like bouncing me back, recentering me in the lane as I go. So just making sure from a safety perspective that we are being safe as we go. But really, really quiet ride. Exactly as I was expecting, as I mentioned, same idea, same feel for the 2020. But as I mentioned, if you're a first time Lincoln driver, getting into the 2021 is a good option. Because again, you, if there isn't a 2020 that's currently built, looking at a factory order 2021 for whether it's a Lincoln or any vehicle, really, the benefit of doing a factory order is you get exactly what you want without having to sacrifice on color choices, interior color choices, different features inside of the vehicle. Across the board though, comfortable, very peppy. And this is only the two liter as well. There still is the option for the 2.3 liter, which just gives you even more power. But trust me when I say this, like the 2.3 liter is really nice, but it's also a little bit of overkill. Unless you're towing something that's a little bit heavier in the 2021. It's nice though. Okay. I wish that this one, that's one thing about different packages and choices, etc. When you're building these things out, if you've never driven a vehicle before with the adaptive cruise control, I normally, I, I understand, I see why you might be apprehensive and think that you don't need it. But trust me on this one, if you do a lot of highway driving, the adaptive cruise control setting, that is literally going to be a butt saver for you. Like it's such a useful feature. It's a set it and forget it cruise control. Let's say if you set it at 110 on the highway or here, here's another scenario for you. Maybe you're the type of driver where you've got a very heavy foot. Maybe you're the type of driver where you go 130, 140 on the highway and you just love going fast. One of the benefits of the adaptive cruise control system, let's say if you set it at 130 on the highway, if the car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically going to break as well. Here's why that's a benefit. Let's say if you are typically a heavy footed driver at a buck 30, if you've got the adaptive cruise control on, you subconsciously won't even realize that you're not going 130 because the vehicle is going to automatically adjust your speed to the vehicle in front of you. So it is, trust me, it's a subconscious play with the adaptive cruise control. That's why I love that system. It is, it's such a useful system. And super comfortable and super quiet ride, which for the Lincoln side of things, I was not honestly like, I'm not surprised that that's the case. It's just the way that Lincoln is, the way that they design the vehicles, the cabin, things like that. It just is, it's a more, it's a compact ride. It's a quiet ride. It's something that Lincoln vehicles are known for. And I love the fact that they've upgraded this vehicle because the way that it was before in the MKC, it was nice, but it was dated. And that's one of the things I'm excited about in the upcoming 2021 Nautilus as well, is that they've decided to take the plunge and upgrade it, give it a different look and a different feel. So that is going to be exciting. Those are going to start hitting lots within the next month or two also. But overall though, I am, I am, I'm super impressed with the Corsair in general. When they did that changeover from the Cor from the MKC to the Corsair, as I mentioned, I did love the fact that they did upgrade it. They changed the rail, made it look very, very, they made it look very, very different. And it really is, it's it's a comfortable vehicle. So if you haven't looked at a Lincoln in a while, I would absolutely recommend doing it. Because if you're in that luxury market, so if you're looking for something like a BMW, Audi, things like that, the Lincoln is a very, very solid competitor in that space. Now with it being a North American made vehicle as well, that just kind of is like a little bit of icing on the cake for people because some people just prefer a North American made instead. Now the Corsair is not Canadian made, that is strictly going to be the Nautilus for now, 
but who knows what the future is going to bring. <laughs> oh, there's speed sign recognition as well, so it lets you know what the local speed is. Now, this thing, as I mentioned, doesn't have the adaptive cruise control, but if you have the adaptive cruise control, there is a step above where it's also intelligent cruise control. So that really, it takes things to the next level. When there's a Corsair on the lot that's fully loaded, so the 202 package, I am absolutely going to be redoing this video, and it's going to be explaining all of the other features that come in that, because it is fairly expensive when you get into some of these other packages. Adding on the odd added technology packages, the massage chair seats, things like that. It just brings the luxury of this vehicle to the next level. Here we are. Well guys, that was a look and a full review of the 2021 Lincoln Corsair. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below. Same with any comments. If you have any ideas for a future video, let me know and I'll absolutely give you a shout out when I shoot that video. But until I see you guys next time, make sure you stay safe.